I think we're missing a lot of the point of why we have this club to start with. And this is where we, in my opinion, have all dropped the ball. We don't have a very safe situation at our school. When we have children who are being bullied simply because of perhaps the way they dress or their sexual preference or whether they're overweight or skinny or pick a, pick a category, then we have... We have... We have given up on our children. I think that's our big problem. If we had the safety at the school that these two young men needed, then we wouldn't have the need for this club. Because the club itself says that they're here for a safe harbor for our students to be ourselves. Is this making a safe harbor? And for everybody that's here who is preaching hate, I urge you to stop. Our children are in the middle of this battlefield. And it's ridiculous. And it's got to stop. It's got to stop from people who are supposed to be Christians. And it's got to stop from people who do not like us simply because we are Christians. And it's got to stop from everybody in between. This is a school. This is not a place to pursue agendas. This is a place where children should be coming in safety and learning how to move on to their adult lives. This is a place to learn reading and writing and arithmetic if you want to get down to it. It's not a place for people to promote agendas. And I don't care what agenda it is. If nothing else comes from this, I urge that we need to actually implement the zero tolerance policy that we have for bullies. If we had done this from the start, we wouldn't have this great turnout. Imagine if all of us had actually cared about our children before this week. Mr. Director, I appreciate your time. I hope I've said something that may affect some people. I urge everyone here to calm down. We, we talk about hate a lot. And it's, and it's here, it's real, but we cannot legislate people's feelings. Your time is up. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Dr. Lomas, 
where by the Tullahoma News, I believe. Um, she said the court system has already made a ruling on the legality of such a vote. That's not true. Um, the Supreme Court's only made a ruling on the Equal Access Act one time since its inception, and that was 1990. And it was a religious speech uh, case. It was Mergen's, if you want to look it up. Um, in 68, there was a case called Tinker, where they were trying to decide the free speech rights of children in school. Um, and that's where a lot of this GLSEN stuff comes from, is they believe that children have uninhibited rights to free speech in the public school system. That's simply not true. Um, since then, there's been three cases where uh, in, in courts where they've challenged the authority of schools to limit speech. On all three occasions, the school won. Um, they were allowed to limit such speech. Um, there's some other cases also that I'd like to talk about. One of them being Christian Legal Science Society excuse me, versus Martinez, where the plurality of justices conceded that school boards must be permitted to establish and apply their curriculum in such a way as to transmit community values, and that there is a limited, or there is a legitimate and substantial community interest in promoting respect for authority, traditional values, be they social, moral, or political. This one, this, this is not settled in any way, shape, or form. Um, it's going to have to be settled one day because I'm not going to stand for my kids being subjected to homosexuality in a public school. There's, that's no place for it. You have in the school policies an anti-bullying uh, section in there that tell, says kids will be disciplined for bullying. You need to follow that and, you know, do that. Discipline for bullying. We don't need this club. Um, I had a lot of other things to say, but without a podium, I can't really go over it. So I'm going to just say, I'm just going to read a paragraph, and then I'll be done. People who want to start a gay club in their high school say it will be all about coming together because of a common interest to talk about diversity and political issues. But the teachers and administrators and parents need to know that GSA is a youth recruitment stick strategy carefully laid out by gay activist groups who carefully avoid addressing the health issues involved. Parents, teachers, and students need to know about the dangers. There is no excuse for ignorance. The mainstream media won't report it, but the internet is packed with truth about the radical gay political agenda and lifestyle. In order to get what they want, they are targeting, targeting kids. Um, if you ever heard of Kevin, Kevin Jennings, he's the founder of the GLSEN. Um, in 2006, they had a conference up in Massachusetts where they bust in middle school and high school kids that were members of the GSA, and they were subjected to stuff like fisting, rimming, oral sex, anal sex. The GLSEN. Two times up, no, sir. Point of order. Point of order. say sorry to every Christian against the GSA here tonight for all the misconducts that you have received. And Thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm also sorry to every 
pro-GSA member for the misconduct you have received tonight. I'm a ninth grader here, freshman. I know why I'm here. Press knows why I'm here. You know why I'm here. I'm not going to even try and defend my constitutional rights because you know them. Uh, and for those of you saying this is a gay club, it's not. I'm a heterosexual. It's called a gay straight alliance. Go figure. <laughs> and there are also people saying the club is sexually based. No. <laughs> The reason we have this club, mainly, is to end the demeaning of the LGBT community, especially down here in the South and Franklin County, where dehumanization is very high. We are being antagonized and we are being slandered. We see why this club is needed. We have gained much support, yet much anti-support. I'm sure our support outweighs the hatred, though. We need this club because some people have chosen to prove to us why in the dehumanization of us. There are some people that would like a fishing club in here instead of a GSA. And trust me, you could do that. Be a teacher sponsor, try and try again. Because that is what the GSA did, and that's what you can do. We have community support faculty support, and student support of almost 50. I can name a short list of anti-GSA people, and I have one planned out. That's against the policies for this speech, I understand. And my point is that this community needs this group, and not just the school. And you can't tear the club down legally, to my belief, I could be incorrect. <coughs> unless you exit all non-curricular clubs. And I also stand against that, because every club that we have in this school, we have for a reason. Hunger Happens Here helps people in need of food. Yearbook creates the yearbook, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it provides a financial standpoint for the school. And for anyone anti, I, 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 I am against you, but I respect you. You can tear us down. You can tear our signs down. You can tear the tears out of our eyes out of fear that we will be hurt. But so far, we have the legal right to keep meeting. And uh, I'm speaking mainly because some people don't realize this. As you might know, I fought to even be able to speak at this meeting. And that fight will not be in vain. It's not only my fight, but a fight of roughly two-thirds in here, I would say. Not only do I ask that you keep this club, but I do ask that you also listen to the two previous speakers and the next one, because I'm sure they had good things to say. Good luck to them, and I hope you all have a good night. And I'm finished. <laughs> Suicide Prevention Task Force. 
What we learned was that kids seek and need peer contact and counseling. And the support groups should be established in the schools because that's where kids are. Both the troubled kids and the peers who can support them. And school may also be their only safe place. School is more now than the three R's. And schools are a microcosm of the society where we live. This is where children learn appropriate interaction. And this happens more during clubs and other non-classroom times. This is why clubs and social gatherings are essential, so that we can learn these social skills, so that we can learn how to get along. Now, some of the principles in this club are part of our church youth group, where over the years they have learned active caring and active serving. And at this church, I also teach Sunday school. And in Sunday school, I try to match the Bible reading of that week to our daily life. Well, yesterday, the reading was the Transfiguration. God spoke very briefly. He said, this is my son. Listen to him. Exclamation point. Now, when God's talking and there's an exclamation point, that's probably what we ought to do. Listen to him. Listen to him when he says, love your neighbor. Listen to him when he says, love yourself. Listen to him when he says, do not harm children. And of course, last week, the gospel reading, Jesus had come back to the small town where he grew up, Nazareth. And they were feeling proud of him until they realized he was not being the way they expected. Then they got enraged to the point where they wanted to kill him. As he gave out Old Testament examples of God working through the prophets, helping peoples that they openly hated, people who were different. Love overcomes fear. That's years of Sunday school in three words. Love your neighbor. Three more words. Please retain for these children their God-given right, their legal right, to just be. Just be themselves, to just be safe. Thank you. Amen.